Hello everyone. Now once we have studied thermodynamics first law, then uh, we have to analyze what this law has to offer us. Thermodynamics first law basically is a accountant for energy. It says that the amount of work that is being done on the system, the amount of heat that is given to the system, that sum total will be equal to the energy that the system would have the energy that will be increased in the system. Now this is simple accountancy. You're, you're keeping an account of the energy in the form of heat and the energy in the form of work. Nothing more than that. Suppose there's a ice cube kept on the floor. So eventually this ice cube is going to melt and this ice cube is going to take certain amount of energy from the surrounding in order to melt. Now suppose this ice cube takes 2 joule of energy to melt. Then if you apply thermodynamics first law for this process, then the work here is zero. Fine. The internal energy, if you, if you are, if you are taking this cube, ice cube as a system, then the amount of heat given to this internal, to this ice cube is 2 joule. So the internal energy, increment in internal energy will come out to be 2 joule. Fine. So it, it's it's very simple and innocent kind of equation. You tell you you tell this equation how much energy you are giving in, and it will tell you by what amount the internal energy will increase. Suppose there's some water kept on the floor, and in a hypothetical process, I'm saying that this water gave some energy to the surrounding, and it became ice cube. Now, if you go and ask this thermodynamic first law, that thermodynamic first law, please tell us whether this process will be possible or not. Then this thermodynamics first law is not going to tell you anything about it. It will just ask you what was the heat exchange and what was the work done during the process. You will tell this thermodynamics first law that there wasn't any work done, but there was some amount of heat given by the system to the surrounding and that heat is 2 joule. So thermodynamics first law will do some calculation given this work is 0 and given this Q is equal to 2 joule minus 2 joule because the water is releasing some energy out. So thermodynamics first law will tell you that the change in internal energy of your ice cube is minus 2 joule. But that's wrong because this ice cube will never be formed and this water spontaneously will never change into ice cube but even if the process is hypothetical the thermodynamics first law entertains you and tells you that the energy of the ice cube is minus 2 joule so this is wrong because if the process is not happening we shouldn't talk about the exchange in energy and we shouldn't talk about the internal energy in this hypothetical process there should be some means or some another law that will stop me at the very first stage and that will tell me that this process is not possible. So if we keep the two laws back to back, this is thermodynamical, thermodynamics first law. Now if I construct a thermodynamics second law that will tell me first of all the process is possible or not. So first of all I have to go to thermodynamics second law. I'll ask thermodynamics second law whether the process is possible or not. Thermodynamics second law if permits and give the permission that the process is permissible then we will switch over to thermodynamics first law and for this energy balance because thermodynamics first law alone is not capable of predicting or finding out whether the given process is stable is, is spontaneous is possible is viable or not so for that reason the direction of movement of a system in a particular process is not found out or is, is, is not predicted by thermodynamics first law. So this hypothetical process will also be considered and entertained by thermodynamics first law. So that's the deficiency that thermodynamics first law has in itself. So we are looking forward for a process or a law or a principle that will guide us in predicting whether a given process is permissible to move in a particular direction. Whether ice cube is permissible, is permitted to move towards melting and moving towards water, 
or if water is permitted to move and form a ice cube so this direction of movement of a process that is found out by thermodynamics second law thermodynamics second law is a very very important law it's a very comprehensive law and it's a it gives the most general idea of all the sciences so you are about to study a law that's very important that's going to explain all the phenomena that you observe happening around you so tighten your belt make your backbone straight as we are going to study thermodynamics second law now in order to predict the direction of movement of a process if i am going to tell you that if water kept on a floor is going to turn into a ice cube you are not going to accept that the reason that you are not going to accept that is because of your experience you have a you have never seen such things happening you have never seen that a coffee or tea kept in a mug like this gets hot on its own you have always seen the other way round you have always seen a hot coffee to be moving to its becoming cold at the room temperature you have never seen a coffee kept at room temperature becoming hot on itself so there is some observations that we have already that we know already and based on those observation we are going to construct a principle and that principle or that law is going to be called as thermodynamic second law the thermodynamic second law is going to explain you everything that you observe around you that why a cup of tea hot gets cooled down ultimately towards room temperature it explains you why sun is ultimately going to be cooled down it explains you why papers trees coals gases and all such things like them are going to burn it explains you why sand never burns why iron rusts why shiny copper jewelry turns green why tools and machineries wear out why rivers rush down the hill and wreak havoc in the villages why hurricanes and any weather is at all on earth why houses get torn apart in tornadoes and explosion why bones break why why people get sick why we die all the phenomena that you observe around you is going to come from thermodynamic second law a thermodynamic second law has various statements which have very close link to each other and all the statements points out towards a certain fact now i will not delve into the statements straight away before that let me give you a simple statement or let me utilize the whole space and start writing from the beginning of the board